the DJI Mavic Air 2. What a surprise, because it is my favorite drone in the world. But specifically, today I want to talk about the camera settings and if you are a beginner, um, what camera settings you should choose and why and how you can just set them once and then forget about it and create awesome, cinematic, smooth drone footage. Let's dive right in. So there's two types of settings. There's the main settings um, that are right here on your main display. And then there's also the hidden, more advanced settings that I'll talk about later. So in terms of main settings, just like click the little button above your shutter button right here. And then um, you have your different shooting modes. So in terms of resolution, I think um, 4K is the way to go. I really don't think there's a reason to not choose 4K. If you scroll a little bit down here, you can see there's a slow motion mode and that mode uh, lets you record in really high frame rate. So you can get really cool slow motion stuff. But unless you're recording like a surfer or windsurfer or a jet ski, or I don't know, something moving really, really fast. Um, I don't think there's a reason to use that mode. And um, a 4K resolution definitely future proofs your footage and will look absolutely crisp and amazing on a TV a monitor on, on a large scale. It's, um, I, I would choose it unless you really, for some reason, forgot your main memory card and you're working with the, what is it, eight gigabytes internal memory that might be the one and only scenario to not choose 4k in my opinion otherwise pop in a memory card 64 gig 128 gigs cost you 20 bucks of amazon links up down below in case you're interested and um yeah 4k in my opinion is the way to go um even if you're just working on 1080p projects with a 4k clip then you have a lot of ability and post to like zoom in and out of your footage which is really really cool so in my opinion definitely 4k all the time. Next is frame rate. Well, mm, frame rate is a little bit controversial. I think if you're doing videos like this where you're talking to the camera, um, you might just want to go with 24 frames per second. Actually, that's what I'm recording this in right now. But whenever I fly my drone, I always choose uh, 60 frames per second. It's a matter of fact, that's one of the reasons why I picked up the DJI Mavic Air 2 because it's one of the first entry-level drones. I mean, it's not an expensive entry-level drone, but uh, you get my point. And um, that lets you record 4K footage in 60 frames per second. So what that means is you can still really slow your footage down and create really cool slow motion effects, but in 4K. So you don't need to go as crazy as the um, super slow motion mode that I talked about earlier. You can still just record 4K, 60 frames per second, and instead of playing it at 100% speed, you can really slow it down to 40% speed and create really cool effects like waves crashing and all sorts of stuff. So I would, I would just always find 60 frames per second. Yes, it records more data and yes, your clips are larger than a 24 frames per second clip in 4K, but you do have the ability to, to slow your footage down, which I think super important and gives you the ability to create super cool effects in, in post. So 4K, 60 frames per second. Down here on the right hand side in the very bottom, if you tap that little button there, then you can switch over from manual to auto or from auto to manual, depends on what you're on. In terms of ISO, sorry, I, I love this camera. I love this drone, don't get me wrong, but I mean, it's still like, um, People don't like it when I say entry level, but I'm sorry, it is, you know, like a super expensive camera would cost you thousands of dollars just in and of itself, and it wouldn't even fly. So the fact that this flies and shoots 4K and 60 frames per second, there's, it's still entry level, sorry. And I'm saying this because you don't really want to move away from ISO 100. Mm. You might get away with 200, and I talked about this in some of my other videos, but anything above 200, like 400 or anything above that, it, it will give you really, really noisy, grainy footage, which in my opinion is completely useless, unless you really try to just make a small video for Instagram, maybe that will still look okay. But if you wanted to publish something on YouTube that people might watch on the monitors or TVs, mm, these little sensors are not made for that. So I highly encourage you to stick to ISO 100 if 
at all possible. And then there's the shutter speed. Um, well, I mean, if you do everything on auto, obviously you don't have to worry about it. Um, if you are going on manual, then you'll see that you'll probably get like a really, really wide screen if you're at least pointing it out on during the daylight. And, and that's that's the time where you would use like an ND filter. So I've got like a Polar Pro variable ND filter here where I can adjust the f-stops like on the fly so I don't have to put on different ND filters all the time. But in general, I'm sure you've heard this, um, the shutter speed should be twice that of your frame rate. So if you're shooting at 60 frames per second, that means your shutter speed should be at 1 120th, right? And if you're shooting at 24 frames per second, then 1 148th or 1 150th. If you want to fly in manual, you will need an ND filter. There's different options, and I'll put some links down below in the description if you're interested. But you will need to pick one and pop that onto your lens so that you can manually control the shutter speed. And that basically gives you like a more cinematic kind of motion blur. If you're a beginner, I wouldn't worry about that too much just yet but I just wanted to put it out here because it's very relative to camera settings. All right and then next let's head over to the advanced settings. So there's a couple of things that I want to mention here. Um, I don't want to go into too much detail but like in terms of um, the color profile here you have normal and cinema like D. I always shoot in cinema like D because I like to color grade my footage. Um, in, in post-production, whether that's in DaVinci Resolve or Final Cut Pro. And for me, that's a really, really fun process, but I do have to say it was quite a bit of a learning curve for me to know what I'm doing and how to make the footage look good. I mean, you should go back and watch some of my older videos. <laughs> they did not look good. So um, if you don't want to color grade your footage in post or you don't want to like do a lot of editing period then i would highly recommend actually to just choose the normal color profile um, i've just uh, taken this puppy out today and just shot in normal and i think it looks actually really fantastic um, there's not much you have to do to it again if you enjoy the color grading process in a professional editing tool then obviously you want to choose something like the because that is as close to a log profile as you can get and then um, here the overexposure warning i always turn it on if you're flying in auto you probably don't have to worry too much about it but if you are flying in manual it will basically tell you that um, certain things are overexposed you can see all the zebra lines here and so i'm pointing the drone right at the sun here and you can see that I'm getting all these zebra lines and basically it means that I should either put on a different ND filter or film in the other direction. So for me that is really useful if I see that something is really overexposed with my variable ND filter from Polar Pro, I can simply just adjust the, um, the f-stop um, reduction and then point it at the sun again and you see the zebra lines are gone and now I'm perfectly exposed for what I'm trying to record. Um, if you're interested in these wonderful variable ND filters, um, I'll put a link down below in the description. But moving on here to grid lines, um, they're pretty self-explanatory. They're just uh, lines all over the screen. Um, I just choose the ones here that give you um, the basic squares because then I, it's clear where the middle is and you can always follow the rule of thirds. And um, I don't really need the diagonal lines and the cross in the middle. If you want it, you can put it, but I, it doesn't really give me a benefit. If I have the grid lines here, I think it, it tells me exactly where the middle of the shot is and also where two thirds is and where one third is. So that's the most useful thing in terms of photography or videography or in terms of composition in general. Okay, now um, a very controversial topic, white balance. So a lot of people on the internet and on YouTube actually say that you should just leave it in auto and um, yeah. Do that. Um, for me, um, I actually set it to either 5600 Kelvin or 6000 Kelvin just because I'm working with, I'm trying to be a videographer here, so I'm working with a lot of cameras. I've got the Panasonic GH5, I've got the Osmo Pocket, I've got the Instagram 360, I've got the GoPro Hero 6, and I've got the Mavic Air 2, the Mavic Air 1. You get the idea. I've got a lot of cameras, and if they're all, if you set them all to automatic white balance, well, they all interpret what what white is, which white is really white differently, which means all the footage from all the different cameras is gonna look slightly different, which is not a big deal. You can easily adjust that in any editing program, 
but it is more work. So I just like to make sure that all my cameras are set to the very same setting. So if I just set it to 5600 or 6000, then bada boom, then all of my footage basically looks the same. So that's just a little trick that I learned over time. Be careful though, for example, the GoPro doesn't have 5600, the GoPro, well, at least the Hero 6 black. The GoPro only has six, uh, 5500 or 6000, but it doesn't have the, the individual level. So, but then it's only off by 100, so I don't think it's that much of a big deal but wanted to mention it. For me, that's definitely a manual setting. 5600 is my preference, or maybe, maybe 6000. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about in terms of Kelvin and 5600 and 6000, I'll put up this little graphic here that I, that I think explains really, really well what these different colors mean. As I switch these settings, you can see that it either becomes kind of blue, or if I switch it all the way over to the other side, it means it becomes kind of like orange or yellowish. And that's simply because I'm telling the drone, hey, uh, this is the lighting condition, or I'm telling the camera, this is the lighting condition, please compensate for that. So ideally you uh, set it to a setting that's actually, um, that actually makes sense. Okay, and there's a lot of other stuff in here actually, but I don't think you need to worry about the rest. The rest I would just really um, forget about and leave untouched. Just try to familiarize yourself with these settings and you will create better drone footage, I promise. And if you're interested in more stuff like this, drone tutorials, product reviews, drone accessories, um, you know what to do. Click the little red button down below. Leave me a comment what you want to hear about next. And I will see you next week.